Uh, page 28, Snowy White Snow and Jingle Bells. Cut time or 2-2 two -two time. One chart, we're in the key of G major. Please make sure you can do this G major scale, at least going octave up and down. Now when I start to learn a piece in cut time, I put it in 4-4 time to learn it. And then I'll put it back into cut time when I have it learned and I'm ready to take it up to speed. So I'm going to talk about this as though it's in 4-4 time and a quarter note gets a count. Because in cut time, a quarter note would get a half a count and an eighth note would get a fourth of a count. I mean, one and a two type thing, and I don't know. So it's just a quarter note gets a count, an eighth note gets half a count. One and two end. So let's take it one hand at a time. I got some suggestions. We want to watch this fingering carefully. You're starting here. Now watch these notes in the first measure. Just the notes. Don't worry about the rhythm. Here's here, and here, and here, and here. And here. Now that would be the, this fingering, because that's a G chord, and that would be the fingering we'd use. The problem is we have an E coming up, so I, I need my little finger. So we adjust the fingering like the, what the book says, and we're going to kind of use all five fingers here. And I'm not trying to hold the hand down on all five at the same time. I'm kind of rolling it here to here, and I'm moving the hand up as I play these. Uh, yeah. That makes it a lot easier to play. And we want to stay relaxed anyway. So then the rhythm. One and two. One and two and three. Rest. During the rest, come back down. And right now I'm connecting everything. We'll do these staccatos and stuff later. Just notes, fingering, and rhythm is what I'm after. That, that happens a lot here. So you use the same fingering each time. Let's go over to page 29, second line. You have a rest at the end of the first line. It gives you time to come up into this position. One, one four here. And they want three here. That's kind of uncomfortable when I'm here. So I'm going to do a two, three. Repeated notes, and we, we can use different fingers on repeated notes. So I'm going to go two. Hold that half note down. Here, during the rest, come back up. Now, third line, third measure. It's here, and five. That's fine. So we don't have to connect this and this because there's a, another note in between them. So it's here. And we're using fourth finger because we just used fifth. So it's here and then. We just claps the hand down is all. And then you go back to the theme you had at the beginning. Last line. You're up here. One and two. Reach down. It's an octave. One and two. Dotted rhythm. Second line. This is the second measure last line here. Three and four and. And I know those are the awkward fingers, but we need to use them, so don't shy away from them. Just right. Reach up. Okay. Left hand. You're starting out four and two. And then you're going in here. And that G is not held down, it's just a quarter note. During the rest, come down. So you're kind of in this position with the thumb covering different things. That's fine. Let's go over to page 29, second line. You're up here. One, two, three, four. And that is a G sharp and a D. Here, and now they want second finger again. F sharp C, and then second finger again. This third line down, third measure. And they want four one here. If that doesn't work, then reach up. If you got really big hands, you just reach up and two one here, and then you can do. They want a three one here because you got the D coming up. Different ways of fingering this. 
Our problem is the last measure of the third line. We want to go from the F sharp to the D and want to connect them. Well, at the beginning of the line, we're here for a whole note and then here, and that puts third finger here. Well, if you use the fingering in the book, then it's 4 1, and then you got to reach over to the third finger here and you're sliding off the thumb. Uh, yuck. Another way of doing it would be to third line, I could do a 4 2. And then a 3-1. That's still a little awkward. Your hands have to be fairly large. Or another way of doing it is in the second measure there in the third line, after you play the B with second finger, substitute and put thumb on that. Do it immediately. This is a fast piece, but it's a whole note. You got time here. Then you can play the A with second finger and 3-1 and then 4-1. Still have to slide off. That's all right. We do this sometimes. But at least now we're in position to connect it. Because you need to be able to do this. I know with little hands that's a stretch. But do the best you can. So that's what I am going to recommend you do. Just on the second measure, play it with second and then substitute thumb there. The next line, you have four two again, and we've had this before. Last line on page 29 is here. I'm going to recommend second measure use 3-2 and then you can use 5-2 or 5-1 for the quarter note here or here, whichever. And then during the rest you come down. The G. Put the hands together. A little tricky here. Now when you first start putting the hands together you're going to hesitate, you're going to have problems, that's fine. You know, all we're trying to do is get the hands to work together. When do the notes in each hand go down at the same time? That's what we're after. Which fingers are involved? So you're here, then we're here, rest, during the rest, the left hand comes down. Rest, and then during the rest, both hands move. The left hand comes up here, the right hand comes down here. You can do it at the same time. You can do it one hand real quick, one hand at a time. It's up to you. I try and move it one hand at a time if I can because it's easier. I can focus on them, but it's, it's a personal thing. So let's go on. Rest. And then here, the, only the right hand comes down for the last measure of the third line. fingers in each hand going on so just watch that here and then here and then here so just work that out let's go over to page 29 second line you're here that chord and then going on And then you go on. So you work it out slowly and get the hands together and then you go back through and get rid of the hesitations. You can go real slow but that beat needs to be a steady beat. So work on that. And then we can go put in these slurs and staccatos. A nice light wrist staccato here in the right hand short staccato. Both hands. In this left hand when there's nothing marked just connect them. line, that, that little line over the note, just hang on to that, the full beat, just linger on it, linger on it, or just hang on to it for a bit, it's like, oh, there we are, let's go over to page 29, second line, here, here, I'm hanging on to the half notes, but this is staccato, just boom, boom, quarter notes to the next whole note. Connect all that together. Now when 
you do this, when you play the, this is the end of the third line, when you play the D, both hands come up together. Because the right hand is tied, you don't play it again. Right there? Doesn't have to be a real short staccato on this one. It, it kind of hangs out there by itself, so you can make it a little longer. Because a short staccato just doesn't quite catch it. So make it a little longer staccato on that one. Let's go down to the last line. You're here. This is connected. Now, they're simplifying the music here. But technically, in the second measure of the last line, it's one, two, three, and four. You come up on four and then come up. Because you want to. Because you're like taking a breath. And here, so the hands would not come up at the same time the way it's written. However, they're being nice to you and simplifying the music. I'm suggesting to you lift both hands at the same time in this measure. So it's here. Lift them up, both up. And here it's again short. Not super short, just short. It's kind of tricky with the articulation. So you can go over that, have fun with it. Then think about the dynamics. What, what do you think moderately loud is? And that's the melody. That's the top note in the right hand. Everything else has to be in the background. So forth. And you're staying in that area. Not exactly that, but in that area until the second line on page 29. We go into this other part. This other melody. You come down to moderately soft. Just come down a little bit. Left hand is soft. And the third line you have a crescendo there. And the, well, you're going to go up maybe to moderately loud or just a hair above it. And there's not a lot of difference there. So I suggest maybe you take this like a measure at a time and you just go up just a hair. So the first measure, go up just a hair. Up a hair. There you're up. Now, now we're back to moderately loud. And then the last couple measures there, you're loud. So, and that's hard to do, to be loud and play that with those fingers. It takes a lot of weight. Just put a lot of weight on them. I'm, I'm rotating on them. I'm not trying to hold the hand still and just use the fingers. I'm rotating. So forth. Then we add the speed. Well, now we got to put it back and cut time. We'll feel it in two. One, two. Doesn't have to be a fast two. It's actually a slow two. But it's a... play it with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics. Now give us four counts. I want to take this in 4-4 four, four time where a quarter note is going to get a count. So let's just try it together slowly, even just one hand at a time if you need to for a bit. One, two, ready and go and one.
rest.